think of you a situation. Let's say that I'm on that starvation diet. And I need some energy and I need some glucose. What am I going to do? Well, let's imagine I break, eat a lot of protein. Okay, I've got a plenty of protein, or I'm breaking down my own proteins, which has happened on a complete starvation diet. You start breaking your own proteins down. Either way, I'm breaking down protein. I start producing glutamic acid for one. Glutamic acid gets converted into alpha ketoglutarate, and we go, okay, well, let's get some energy. We'll go around here, and oh my goodness, there's exaloacetate. Let's go make some glucose. So I can use a part of the cycle to do something. It is. So it really depends, and, and this cycle is what we call, and here's a name that you should know. It's called anapleurotic, A-N-A-P-L-E-R-O-T-I-C. Anapleurotic means literally to fill up. What does that mean? It means that if the cell needs some of these intermediates for something else, it's going to take them and use them. If I need to make glucose, this is a great way to get it right over here. What if I have a lot of amino acids sitting around? Well, they could enter in here. So it can give, it can take. And that's the anaplerotic nature of the pathway. It's so intimately tied to so many things in the cell, that's one of the reasons that virtually every cell on the face of the earth goes through this cycle. Oh, question, yes. I thought I heard something. A-N-A-P-L-E-R-O-T-I-C, anaplerotic. Yes. It literally, it means to fill up. Okay, but anaplerotic is used to mean it, that there's interactions with a lot of pathways. If you want to think about it that way, that's the way. To, I don't really have a good definition for it other than to fill up. So it can fill up other pathways. Other pathways can fill it up. There's a give and take, a real give and take with this cycle. Okay. Ah, uh, let's see. Table. What's that? No, nah, don't worry about that. Uh, energetics. I'm sure you'd love to memorize that, wouldn't you? No, we're not going to go through that. Um, rolling catabolism. Okay. Well, this very complicated figure is telling you what I just told you in simple terms. It's showing you how some of the things can come in and be used. Here's some amino acids that come in and be used. So many amino acids can form intermediates in the cycle. Here uh, are other, other amino acids coming in over here. So look at this. You've got proline, arginine, glutamine, glutamine, and histidine, all of which can come in through these, these directions here. No, you're not going to memorize this. All right. Acetyl-CoA coming from uh, these amino acids up here also comes from fats and fatty acids not shown there. Here's all these amino acids feeding in over here. So most of the amino acids can feed in through this pathway. Here's carbohydrates coming in. Here's amino acids coming in. And here's lipids in the form of fats and fatty acids coming in. Okay, So very intimately tied to metabolism of many, many things inside of the cell. That's if we are breaking all of those things down. Similarly, we can use some of these intermediates to make things. So we use, for example, alpha-ketoglutarate to make glutamate. We use exaloacetate to make, um, um, well, actually, that's kind of a dumb figure. Um, it's showing it coming into here when, in fact, the important thing is what's going out. It's going out as uh, glucose. All right? This guy is used, as I said, to make heme. This guy is used to make nucleotides. It's not shown on here. So these things are important intermediates in making other things as well. And cells will take and use them as they need. Glutamate itself can go to a lot of other things. The nitrogen in glutamine is used for many, many things, and we'll see how that plays in a cycle called the urea cycle later. Yes? Good question. Very good question. Okay. If I use one of those, do I stop the cycle? Well, if all I had going on was that cycle, I would. But because I've got connections to all these other things, you see, I can short circuit it. So I can bring in something here, take it out over there, and keep things going. Uh, there's not much signaling that's needed. It's actually pretty much supply and demand. As cells need things, they take it. And as cells produce excesses, they get gobbled up here. So it's a real give and take with this pathway and other pathways. It's a remarkable setup inside of the cell. And keep in mind that these things are happening in the mitochondrion. Right? So things that are happening in the cytoplasm aren't going to affect it. 
If I want to affect it, I have to get it out of the mitochondria and into the cytoplasm. So there is some segregation that's, that's provided by the cellular localization. But there's a lot of give and take that happens with these reactions. Absolutely. But, did you have a question? Uh, I was just wondering, uh, like, is this, does this take priority or does, you know, it's kind of a broad question. Yeah. There's no, there's no rules. Okay. It's a give and take. So it's, it's whoever grabs it the most and needs it the most will do it. Okay, uh, it can be any of those things. So energy transport would be needed to get it outside the mitochondria. All right, um, diffusion, of course, is the main driving force for almost anything that happens. Um, so it's if, if you have something in a high concentration, the likelihood it's going to diffuse out and go to something else is higher. That's that's true. So if there might be diffusing things uh, within the mitochondrial matrix to doing something else, we'll see that acetyl CoA is a product of fatty acid oxidation. It's also used to make fatty acids. So we have to, if we have a lot of acetyl-CoA accumulating inside of the mitochondria because perhaps the citric acid cycle isn't running, because you're not exercising, then what happens is acetyl-CoA gets dumped out of the mitochondria and into the cytoplasm where the fatty acids are made. Okay? So you guys are really interested. You guys are interested in this. So we'll, we'll talk about fat metabolism and so forth um, after, the, after the exam. But the, the links of this pathway to all the other processes in the cell are remarkable. If you understand the links of these pathways to the other processes in the cell, I can tell you that you'll know more than my advanced classes now. It's very, very cool stuff. Because you can learn the role of exercise in your life. You can learn why you breathe heavily when you exercise. You already know why you get hot when you exercise. Okay? You can learn how you can change things in your diet to actually because of the pathways that you know. So that's why I think metabolism is a very, very cool thing to understand. On that happy note, I'm going to shut up and let you guys be. So um, I will see you on Friday. Don't forget, we have an exam in here. Uh, the matrix uh, with the liquid that di you said digests all but one enzyme, is that... Okay, so can I didn't tell you which enzyme, but I'll tell you right now. The enzyme that, um, that um, is embedded in the membrane is, is uh, suck, um, sucks the dehydrogenase. Okay. The one that has FAD. Is that in here? Yeah. Okay. It's the one that uses FAD. Oh, right here. I got it. All right. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? Fine. What's up? Uh, so I noticed that this is the only intermediate. And it's, it's, I can't pronounce it. It's Zestinol. It seems to be the only sort of intermediate that... Don't sweat that. Those, no. those things really don't play very big roles okay. in the regulation. Okay. The most important thing are the...